uh, let's talk about drawing drawing horses. And um, today, what I'm going to be doing <clears throat> is we're going to be drawing some horses together. And we're not going to be kind of getting into the weeds of the details of, you know, drawing eyes and nostrils, and things, but we want to, we're going to be drawing the, um, we're going to be drawing sort of, we're looking at drawing the horse, not just in profile, but in three quarter views. And um, to do that, this gets us into this whole idea of thinking about volume the volumes in what we draw. So instead of just the outline, we're going to be envisioning this in our heads as big three-dimensional forms and blocking this in on the paper. And so these ideas will apply lots of different places. These ideas are going to apply um, uh, to uh, any critter or thing that you want to draw thinking about the volumes in, involved rather than just this flat thing is 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 huge so um i'm going to start where we left off with yesterday's not yesterday's last week's workshop um when we were well i'm going to share my screen here um I am going to share share my screen. There we go. Um, and let's see. Um, so we're going to be looking at how do I kind of how do I construct? Actually, I wanted to start start here. Ah, see there now. Look at how professional I am. I have a opening splash screen. So here we are. Um, but you knew that already because you're here. Um, so we're going to be doing the cubist horse. Um, and later on, we'll be kind of rounding these forms and, you know, add the sticking tails on them. But for now, we want to get ourselves to try to uh, envision these things as, as three-dimensional forms. So let me bounce over to my other microphone. There we are. Um, so I am going to suggest that when you are sitting around, you start to play with just doodling three-dimensional shapes and pop a shadow on a side of them. Um, I will often make my, my shadow lines kind of follow the edge, one of the edges that I'm doing on that form. And that uh, that 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 helps um, you sort of see that as as a plane, um, and so just um, not necessarily cubes, but kind of distorted rectilinear objects of all you know shapes and sizes, so that that you're no, oh, come on, pen, so. There we are. Um, just start kind of, you know, when you're, you, you've got a little bit of time in a coffee shop, start to create some of these. And, and, and then what you want to do is start drawing on the, the sides of them. So here I'm going to draw a little line coming over here. And I want to think of if that was a line, perhaps slicing this thing in half, what does it do next? Oh, it's going to turn down here, right? So then if I were to separate these in into the two sides here, I would have one that was doing this. Right. So just, you know, and I would have, here's another. You know, what, what are these, 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 these objects? 
what are they doing? So just, just start messing around with sort of angular volumetric doodles. And you can also do this for round objects. Give yourself a round object and, and try drawing a line across it. Try to cut that round object in half. Um, um, here's, here's, here's another round object. And I'm going to just to, to slice it over here. So that's kind of fun to doodle. Um, also, start making yourself some cylinders. So I'm going to draw an oval. And I'm going to turn that oval into a toilet paper tube. So imagine that there's another oval at the end of that oval. So It'll be the same shaped ovals. And if there's, if we're writing on this toilet paper tube, it'll be a line that's gonna cut around it like that. Huh, well, that's fun. Um, what if I make kind of a megaphone? <laughs> These ones, these lines I'm kind of cutting in here, these are, um, imagine, so how, what, what, what's going on in my head is to draw this end, I'm sort of imagining an oval there, I'm imagining an oval here, I'm imagining another oval here, and then if I just am drawing one side of that, then that gives you these sort of lines that are the cross contour lines, lines that go around the contour of this, this megaphone shape. Playing with these sorts of doodles is absolute gold. It's, it's fun to do. It's non-threatening. You're not worrying about messing up your flower. And it also is, it's all pencil miles. So the more that you're kind of just making weird volumes, um, you know, if you get really, you know, into it, you can make a, you know, a curved thing here. What is that going to be doing? Oh my goodness, there's a, there's a, this thing is going to be curved here. And we're, we're going to curve it here. And then I am going to start to curve it back towards me here. So you can make you can make all sorts of shapes that do fun things. And what you're doing is you're just sort of training yourself to to get to think three dimensionally. If here's another way to kind of make boxes, you just draw a square of one sort, and then you draw another one of a different size, or it can be the same size. And then you just decide which one is in front and which one is back. Is this one an object where there's a small side in front going to a larger one in back, in which case I draw my little lines like that? Um, or is there a big one in front? So just volumetric doodles. It's great. It's really, really good exercise to do. And what we're going to do is we're going to be applying this to our friend, the horse. And if you remember from the last time we met, we were 
um, kind of blocking in the, 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 the shapes and the form of the horse. And we had blocked it into, we had what we called the three circles technique. When we're dra- sort of drawing this, this, this horse from the, the, the side, there was one circle up here in the chest. There was another circle here in the hips. And then there was a bit of a longer one between them. And that we used that to kind of block in the basic shape of our, our horse, of, of, its, of its body. And then I did this kind of strange thing where instead of just these three circles, what I did is I turned the front one into a geometric shape. The big slopy front side here, a smaller side here, a keystone that is pointing up this way, getting smaller this way. And we turned the hips into another keystone, kind of pointing the opposite direction. And so I've got these two keystones. So I started with the three circles, all right? But then I laid these keystones on top of them. And um, what uh, the reason that I'm doing this instead of turning these into these angular forms is this is going to really help me think three dimensionally through the horse. And as I do that, here we just see these as flat keystone shapes. But if you think of the keystone in an arch, it actually is a three dimensional block. And what I want to do is, you know, here are these three shapes kind of put together. Um, I'm getting myself to think of this front one, not just as a flat shape, but as a three-dimensional form. That's smaller at the top end and bigger at the bottom. Now, I've drawn this one this way on the screen. Um, Since I prepared that, I now disagree with myself a little bit. And instead, I'm going to make the top of it kind of instead of a little square this way, um, I'm going to make it a little bit longer across the top. And so this side here is going to be shorter than this side. And there is, this is, this is our chest keystone. And that then gets placed next to a cylinder for the body. And that gets placed next to a a hip keystone that is going the other way. So the back keystone, um, if I actually make it a little bit more interesting than the one that I have there, um, I am going to make it a little bit bigger in the back than I do in the front. And Maybe you want to be down at a steeper angle. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. That's better. A little bit wider in the back. So I'm thinking of these forms as three-dimensional shapes. And that's where we left off. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be picking up from there and we're going to be drawing our horse from not this view on the side, but from this view. So you see a little bit of this front plane and the side of the body. And we're also going to be looking at it from this view where you see the the back plane, the plane along the back of its body and the plane along this side.
So when I'm saying planes, what I'm talking about is imagine if I were taking post-it notes and sticking them on the sort of, you know, the back side here, this back surface, that's a plane. This side surface here, that's a plane. So I'm imagining this as a box. This is one side of it. This is another side of it here. And those are, I want to kind of start to think of this little beastie in three dimensions. So <clears throat> horse pops up in front of me and um, I want to sketch it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to be showing a slightly different approach to kind of constructing these these drawings today. That's going to start very gestural. Um, but as I start my gestures, I'm going to begin the gesture with my favorite line in the the body of of a, of a sketch, and that is the line coming down the neck, across the back, and starting to go down the hips here. So look at the the shape of the air back here behind the neck and let me move my fingers out of the way so it's all white paper there look at the shape of the air behind the neck coming across here and down the back this is my first line it kind of gives me the line the energy line for this drawing and i'm going to draw that on my piece of paper so I have a line that kind of comes down and then depending on, you know, whether your eye level is uh, where your eye level is, you're going to sort of see the back is sh here. You see long back. If I turn it this way, that back gets shorter because it's pointed away from you. So I'm going to give myself a shorter back, but still I'm getting this line in here and then what i'm going to do is just hanging down from that frame i'm going to give myself a scribble drawing of the rest of the horse kind of hanging in there so i'm going to say like oh, okay you got little belly that is in here you got your little horsey body and your head kind of comes up and and you got a little horsey head here don't make your head your neck too long so if you kind of put in a super long neck um, you can, you can kind of make that smaller, right? You're going to have your little horsey neck down there. And, and I often like looking at the shape of the air between the legs here. What is the shape of the air between the legs? That's what uh, artists call the negative shape. So what I'm doing there is I'm kind of kind of like I've got I've got a shape and it's and it's kind of coming down like this here and this here and and there's another leg it's kind of coming down here I'm looking at how and for right now I'm just kind of putting these legs down sort of vertically where they 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 come in not worrying about any detail on these legs and um, and then I'm going to look at how far down do I want to put my ground. If I put my ground down here, it's going to feel like a colt, right? Right. So long legs towards the 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 compared to the rest of the body on a horse, on an adult, the proportions of those legs it's not as leggy so if you put in somebody with super long legs relative to the body um you know it will feel like a young horse so if you're just falling around that's great you can do that but if you want it to look like an older horse then the proportions of the body to the legs are not going to be the same right so here is that's so what I'm going to put in. Yeah, my ground is going to be roughly in here. Okay, so um, I get this. It's a scribbly drawing, and then on top of that scribbly drawing, I'm going to put in my three circles. Oh, actually, in this I kind of tricked out my head a little here a little bit. 
putting in a ball where I see the head and a little line for the front of the ridge of the nose. Kind of gives my horse somewhere to look. Um, let me see if I can. Zoom a little bit. There, that's better. All right. Um, I'm going to actually refocus this. Manual focus, turn manual focus off. There we go. And all right. So I've got this sort of scribbly drawing, and it's lightly handled, it's loosely handled, and now I'm going to bring in my three circles. I love thinking of the three circles because um, so, some people might be able to kind of drop in these sort of geometric shapes on top of each other, but for me, I really like thinking about this in terms of three circles just because it is, it's easy for my brain to think of how how these three circles are going to kind of overlap with each other. And just with a few quick lines, it's, I'm not worrying about angles or anything like this. I'm just trying to get three big body sections that are overlapped in front of each other so that I'm starting to kind of get this overlap in the dimensions in this body. So this is starting to help me think kind of three dimensionally. So one for the chest, one for the body, and here I've drawn it as a full circle here, but I will often just sort of make as for the lines that are in this area here might make those a little bit lighter. So there's, there's just, I could like make a whole circle here. I could be going like this, 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 right. But then I've got a lot more kind of lines in my way than if I'm doing this and just making kind of a overlap this one in, as a C and then overlap this one as this. So I'm probably going to be doing this just to kind of get these 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 three circles overlapping on top of each other and here's my little horsey hip All right so you see already this especially if i do this if i kind of draw a line down the middle the, this this edge of this circle here to show where the middle of the chest is this is starting to feel kind of three-dimensional. It feels kind of like the, the, the Pillsbury Doughboy or the sort of Michelin Tire Man version of a horse. It's just a little bit puffy and not angular, and you don't have these kind of cool prominences of muscles and bones and things happening on your, on your critter. But we're getting a sense already of some volume in this, and that's, that's where we want to be going. But wait, there's more. All right, so there's my, my, my three circles technique. And that's getting me, that's, that's great. But now I'm going to turn these three circles into geometric forms. So I'm going to think of this top one. I like to draw it this way. So here's, here's the, 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 the top edge. And the top edge of this one, it's going to go from the point of the shoulder down, or actually here's the point of the shoulder, from the tip of its shoulder blade down to the point of its shoulder here. So it's going to come down here. And then from the point of the shoulder here, it's going to come back to the elbow. So from here down and then down. And what that is doing is it is giving us this little a plane here and then this plane on the chest. So I'm going to come down and then back to the corner here. I'm going to have a little top here and then back there from this corner here to over here, actually, this is a little bit too wide. I'm gonna make mine a little bit narrower. There we go. So I have this three-dimensional 
shape up here in the front of my horse. Huh. Okay. Now, there's this cylinder that is going back from that with a little bit of a sway to the top. And that, this is the part of the horse called the barrel. So it's a, sort of this, this sort of big rounded barrel chest. I give myself a cross contour line coming across here. And it is going to connect these two in together. And then I'm going to have another geometric shape at the back here, the top of my hip. So from the top of the hip here to the top of the hip here, right? That is my final geometric shape. So if these lines are kind of pointing in this direction and my horse is sort of standing parallel to me, I'm going to have this line be um, parallel with these right. from there it's going to come down sort of slopey butt down here and behind the scenes here There is this, here's this big angular shape. So I'm going to erase this line here. That was there just so you can sort of see that I'm kind of seeing through this. And what I end up with is a geometric form in the front, giving me a slope to the shoulders, a geometric form in the back, giving me a slope to the upper back and the leg. And it gives you this angle. Look at this coming down here. So coming down here and then down here. Kind of gives you a point in the back of the butt there. That's that point in the back of the butt. And then we're gonna stick some legs onto this. So um, as I do, all right, <clears throat> so here are my big joints. Um, there is in the back the ankle and then the wrist is up here. You're then coming down the bones in your sort of the in the hand here are fused together into what's called the cannon bone uh, in the in the horse, um, the metacarpal bone um, and in the front and the metatarsal bone in the the the, the back. And then this little part that comes forward here, so look at the joint. So you've got here, the horse has a shoulder like you do, an elbow like you do. This is its wrist. The hand bones here are fused together. That is this section of the leg. And then this is fingers coming out here. So shoulder, elbow, wrist. This is the knuckle here, and then these are the fingers down here. So I'm going to just put in, that means there's two major joints that we're seeing below the body line, this joint and this joint. And so I'm going to um, uh, have my um, uh, legs coming down. Now notice that I did one straight and one bent. Why am I doing that? Huh? And then this leg here, I'm going to have it come down straight from this corner here. I'm coming down straight. And on this leg here, I'm coming down and let me put in some joints here. Check this out. 
This leg is coming down straight. This leg is coming down straight. This leg, you see a lot of bend in it and a, a little angle out by the, the fingers. This, I mean, the, the toes, this one coming down fairly straight and then a little angle out by the toes. What is going on with that? Well, if a horse is, notice from this angle that both of these legs, the joint is coming back here to the heel. But if I rotate it at a three quarter view angle, this closer leg, you're seeing it straight on. And you're seeing all the angle and bends in this back one, but this one you're seeing straight. And look at the front one here. Look at that. You, you come here. This one here is coming down straight. And what about this one? It's coming down straight until you get to here, and then it's coming out much more forward than this one. Whoa! That's crazy, right? So what you're seeing is legs with that joint, but if you rotate one towards you, it's going to straighten all that business out. So look at this. This one here looks like a straight one and a back one. I used to draw my both legs bent, right? Um, but then I realized, right, that... What if, when you see the horse in a three-quarter view, that back leg, you see all the bendiness. That front leg, that leg that's on the side closest to you, you see that as this straight column. Whoa! All right. <clears throat> so if I'm not looking for that, I'm not going to see it. If I'm not looking for it, what we're going to do is we're going to draw, um, we're going to draw um, both these legs, kind of like that right front legs are straight so i'd do this one like that and you know so you you'd have <laughs> all right this one is looks like it's kind of its legs are on skis but these these toes are actually pointing out a little bit and because of that you see one straight you see the other with angles hmm. Hmm. and now i'm going to put some muscles on these um Let's first just go around and make our knees kind of blocky. The knees and the ankle kind of blocky. And then um, we'll get, we'll, we'll spend a full day workshop detailing in the head and detailing in legs. For now, let's just think of this leg here as as a cone a cone that is bigger at the top and smaller on the bottom and you can kind of you know pooch that out if you want to these lower leg bones here the tarsal the, the metatarsals here this is much straighter then you get to another little joint down here, a little bit swollen. The fingers are thin. And then your hoof is on that. What about that back leg? We're going to have more of a, it's going to have a real curved side in the back. It's going to have a really curved side in the back. Um, the front portion of it is not as, is straighter. The front portion here is going to be straighter. The back, you're going to put in a little bit more of a curve. So I'm coming back here. Blocky. More straight. And then... The fingers come forward to the hoof. As you're placing these, these feet on the ground, think of them fitting in onto a little sheet like this, sort of a, a, a foreshortened flat square. So the front one is going to come down lower. The back one is going to come in higher, lower on the page, higher on the page because it's further away. Now, 
up into here, we're going to have kind of a big, ma bigger mass of muscles that comes down into that little blocky. Um, there is a sort of think of a center line going up here on this surface here. We're going to kind of connect into that center line, the brisket of the horse. We'll be looking at this a little bit further in a, in a subsequent class, but there's a really neat kind of double bump, which we get right down in here with where the pectoral muscles, this is where the pecs, the Arnold Schwarzenegger pecs are, right? And then your muscles are going to come down straight. You're not seeing this big, the front legs come down straight. Back legs have a spring. The front legs are posts. Now let's stick in our head. Here's our target. Our target is on this surface here. That's where our neck is going to come in. And so if I imagine that there's a little oval in there, that's where my neck is going to come in. So I'm going to locate my target. I then I'm going to trick out my head a little bit more. It's really easy to make your head too long. Um, but if my head kind of goes from a point up here down to here, if I swing that down here, I want this neck to be slightly longer, just slightly longer than the length of the head. Right. So I'm going to have a little ball in here. And if I'm looking at a straight side view of the horse, right, uh, we'll, again, on our, on our horse head day, we will... Uh, we'll play with that. But here we're going to be looking at this horse from a little bit of an angle. So I want to get, I want to, no, I don't want you. I want, you. no, you're too big. Fortunately, my daughters have lots of plastic horses. <laughs> um, so I want to imagine a line between the base of the ears that's parallel with a line between the eyes that's parallel with a line uh, through the tops of the nostrils, the bottom of the nostrils, and where the mouth is, these lines are going to be parallel with each other. So um, if I have my eyes fairly high on the head here, and my nose is going to be in here, top and the bottom of my nose, my mouth is going to be in here. My ears are going to be parallel with that. That way I don't kind of get a head with an eye over here and an eye over here and an ear sticking up here and an ear sticking out here. See, that is not in line with that. All right, that's, that's a, well, that's, that's, that's a, a bent horse. Um, and again, on horse head day, we're going to get um, in, into this a little bit more, but there's kind of a neat little diamond shape that you kind of a kite shape in the top of the horse's head, a high, widest where the eyes are, the eyes really stick out. And then that is going to fit into kind of this block where the mouth and the, the nose are going to hang out. And we'll so we'll 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 block in in horse heads again that's that's a subject for another day. My ears here are coming out of a place that is parallel with each other. And once I have that I am coming down to connect my head to the top of this platform here. I want to make... 
Now, when I draw um, these, uh, my, my horses, because I've looked at a lot more deer and gazelles than horses, my horses often end up with a sort of gazelle proportions. So this one has a little bit of wacky proportions for a, a, a horse. But that's just because I've been looking at a lot of gazelles. Um, if you've been looking at more gazelles, your, gaz uh, your horses, uh, then when you start to draw gazelles, your gazelles will often look a little bit more horsey, whatever is your kind of the thing you're the most familiar with. So I, I, I have to know that and then maybe make my my legs less less springy, make my um, body a little bit sturdier, a little bit blockier, my legs a little bit buffer. Um, and then that looks a little bit less. But you see how we, we, we've got a horse that is three-dimensional and has it's got it's got planes to its body. That's really cool. If I imagine that there's light coming and hitting it, then you know it's 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 uh, much easier for me to 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 imagine this form as as a as a three dimensional as a three dimensional form let's also take a look at this view and because we've carefully really taken our time on this front view we're going to go through this view a little bit more quickly but you'll see it's got the same basic principles to create a cubist horse. So I'm going to start with this one is, is, is nibbling some grass, right? So I start with that, that action line, the line of its, of its back. So my horse is, is, is doing this. So lightly, loosely on my paper, I get this, 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 this arch. And then what I'm going to do is just sort of gesture sketch within that. All right. You've got a, a body, you've got a, you've got a leg that is coming down. You've got other legs that are coming down. You've got legs coming down here and maybe one in, 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 in here. And you've got to have another one that's sort of stepping forward. And so and then I'm looking at like if my my body is roughly in here, then in my head is going to be uh, kind of in here. Nom 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 nom. And how far down am I drawing a colt? Um, or am I drawing a uh, uh, an adult horse? So I'm going to put in my so it's a it's a loose scribbly sketch. And then on top of that, oh yeah, and, and for this, it's helpful to think of, like, it, once I kind of figure out what my body is, then I'm, that's helping me figure out where my ground is going to be. So if my body is this deep, here, all right, looks like my legs are a little bit longer. So I don't want to make it a cow and have the body be half the distance to the ground. On the horse, I've got a lot more leg, especially on, uh, on the little colt here, All right? So if my body is here, my legs are gonna be coming down, down to here. Now three circles, but this time we're starting with the rump. And then I'm going to do the same thing where instead of drawing that all the way through, I'm going to just make my, my C's, C's the day. And then I've got my third one up in here. So what that's helping me do is just kind of get this thing in my head that I have these, these overlapping body sections. And then I can work to make some of these body sections a little bit more angular. 
So I'm going to turn cubist on, on the back of the horse here. So I like sort of thinking of where are, where are the hips, the points of the, 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 the hip bone here, and where does that kind of come back to the, the point of the, the, the booty? And I'm giving this a big plane on the back. So that is these points here, these points here. And you notice that that is kind of coming down at a little bit of an angle. We change the angle on this horse. So from up here to down here. Yeah, there's a little bit where the sacral vertebrae are. It sort of sticks out there a little bit. But for doing this, I'll, I'll kind of get that contour a little bit better later on. But for here, I really want to just kind of get that angle between there and there. I think that's the ilium here, the iliac crest. All right. And and this so if this line is this way, this line is going to be this way. There's a big geometric shape hanging off the back of my horse. Now, I'm going to put in a little bit of a sway in the back. And the barrel that is going to be bigger in the front, and it's going to kind of tuck in closer to where you are. So that kind of gives it this little bit of a step out. But again, this is... This is a rounded, you're, you're envisioning drawing a cylinder, not just what we want to do is you, I really want you to think of this as a cylinder. Don't think of this as a small curved line here and a longer one here. You're really thinking of this as, as, a, as, as, a, as, a, as a cylinder that is connecting these forms. And the front of it is another um, big geometric form, but it is, it's blocked by this. That's why we did this one first, then this, then this, because part of our view here is blocked. by the barrel coming in there. And notice how this, you've got, um, I've got, so I've got, what I'm doing is kind of getting this big form. It's, here's the top of it going to the point of the shoulder here, point back here, point back here, right? That's, that's this form. Now, I can stick legs on it. Now, you remember those back legs that had angles? Check this out. Remember that back leg where you could see the angle and the front ones were straight? Check this out. Wait, wait, first predict what is going to happen. If I rotate this so you're seeing the butt view, what, what is going to happen with these legs? Are they both going to look angled? Is one of them going to, is it going to switch? Is it going to stay the same? What's going to happen? Make a call. Look at that. So now the further away leg is straighter. The leg that is closer to you, you see the angle. Ooh, so this really helps us kind of turn our legs in three dimensions. Now, and look at this. So both legs are kind of coming down fairly straight, but this one that is closest to you, you really see the fingers, the phalanges coming off at this you don't see that here, 
You see that right up here on the side that is closest to you. Get yourself a little plastic toy horse or borrow one from your daughter <laughs> or sculpt one out of wood or clay and play with it. Right, so what am I going to do? I've got a leg here that's coming down pretty straight. I've got a leg here that is, um, it's, it, it's coming back. And then forward. So actually, this line is here, then this will be a little bit higher, this will be a little bit higher. I'm just putting in balls where my 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 joints are. And now we're going to we're going to think of those big cylinders again. Um, but let's actually try to do this. So so everybody kind of just off on the side, you can draw yourself a little cylinder. But what if I put a big flap? on the top to help kind of connect it into the side of the body. Muscles are bigger towards the top, they get smaller as we go down. And so if I have a cylinder, say for a part of the leg, I'm going to wrap that into here like a big cone flap. So I'm coming back. I can see the more this this little curve here to my heel. I'm going to kind of come up here. Think of this kind of attaching into the leg. On the back. Give myself those blocky knees, skinny part. But we're thinking of these as, as cylinders dropping down. This is a little bit too much of an angle, um, but uh, I'm gonna let it let it go for now.
So my horse can either have its head down, and again, we will get into um, we'll get into horse heads um, in a in a whole separate workshop. Um, but for this, I want to just sort of continue to think of them as 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 sort of imagine you're 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 constructing this Trojan horse out of wood, these big planes, um, and those are going to um, those are going to um, feed your uh, give give your 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 horse a feeling of. You know, for instance, if this one is looking away from me, I'm going to have my eyes sticking out on the side. So we'll play with um, horse details later again heads will be giving them a, a a place for for we'll be adding tails on we'll be sculpting these muscles a little bit more accurately Um, but this gives you a framework to build on that creates a horse that has, has volume. And instead of being a uh, flat three-dimensional or two-dimensional form, in your head, you're seeing these, you're seeing these angles. And that is, you're, you're, you're seeing these, I'm sorry, these, these, these shapes. And that is a really different way of thinking about something than if you were just focusing on, okay, I've got a contour that comes along like this, there's a little bump. And then there's a little bump somewhere towards the back. Um, when you're thinking about those contours, your brain is really interacting with this in, in a different way. And so I hope that this was a a useful a useful approach and perhaps is a new way well i'm going to change my microphone to um a new way of thinking about these as how do you when you're looking at a three-dimensional form what you think about what you're doing is so first of all i agree this is challenging. This workshop today, this is an advanced workshop. It's challenging. What you're doing is you're looking at a three-dimensional shape. You're then trying to understand those volumes and in your head flatten that into sort of a into a a constructed form on a two-dimensional piece of paper. And so we can only draw in two dimensions, but we're trying to think of that as these three dimensions. And 
it takes some, it's weird to wrap our heads around those things. So having a manipulative um, uh, really, really helps. Um, also, drawing a bunch of cubes and cylinders and forms really helps, and then we kind of can turn those around. And the more we do that, the more we play with it, the, uh, the, 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 the more our brains will be able to wrap around this. I'm going to suggest that you uh, start from looking at some photographs not so much to copy the photograph, but to see those big forms. And then you look at those forms and photographs and say like, how would I, how would I kind of deconstruct that? How would I um, sort of simplify that into some basic geometric shapes that I can put on my paper? Don't worry about kind of tricking it out with all sorts of hair and, you know, the main point is um, not to, um, to, to get all those details at this point. What we're trying to do is trying to help us see and feel that form. And I hope that this was, um, I hope that this was useful to you. Um, let's start with a discussion of any kind of points about this um, and would, um, the uh, and would and then we'll kind of go into some general journal sharing. But does anybody have comments, thoughts, or ideas about this sort of way of kind of thinking about and then blocking in a form three dimensionally in these three these three quarter view angles? Um, I'm going to join Sandra. Um, you can now unmute Sandra, and I'll have you join me. Um, into the spotlight here. Sandra, thank you for being with us. Hi. Um, first, you ruined my perception of birds, so I can't follow anybody's watercolor birds. And now you're ruining my perception of four-legged beasts. I, I don't, truly, I don't know how to deal with this because if I, if I want to follow somebody who's drawing a bird. I know how I would draw the bird first, but you know, that isn't how people draw birds. So um, I can't, I, I can't do that anymore. I have to draw it the jack way. Well, the, the, the way that I do do this is not the right way. It is not the only way to do it. So um, wh what I really recommend you do is that in as you look through anybody else's tutorials, there are um, there are people that will have approaches that really work for you, and you can take parts of those that are really useful. There are um, the, the 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 approach that you know, for instance, the, the approach which I uh, I use a lot of my thinking has been influenced by by other artists, particularly Joe Waverly. Uh, who has a wonderful book on drawing animals. Let me pull it over here and you'll see like, like, oh yeah, Jack's totally riffing off of Joe Waverly ideas. So these aren't, um, but what I, I do is I look at other people's stuff and I say to myself like, oh, I like that idea. I like that idea. I'm going to adopt that. I'm going to use this this way. And, um, and, and tweak it how feel whatever feels right for me so you still can learn from all these other people and just um again bruce lee says absorb what is useful and discard what isn't working for you and it's and it's okay but but thank you for your support let me grab this joe waverly book off my shelf um and oh, this this is i think it's 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 useful here we go So the cover looks like this, and um, this, let me go, if, you know, you'll see <laughs> Joe is blocking things in. We use a slightly different approach here, um, 
but um, you know this is uh, so so ideas that 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 that, that I have it it doesn't um, I'm I'm also a scavenger. I'm a scavenger for anything that works, and I'll kind of like, oh, I like that. I'm going to use that, you know, and um, and then I like to try to then play with it myself, and then I try to articulate to myself what am I doing? How does that work for me? So I can try to um, how I can um, play that with 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 with. with I had a drawing teacher who said, "Don't borrow, steal." Yeah. So and, and so and I'm going to modify that idea. The the um, Austin Kleon is a wonderful thinker and 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 visual artist who wrote a book called Steal Like an Artist. Right. And the idea is to take all these ideas, but also in that give re respect and props to the people whose ideas you're taking. So for, for instance, you, I said, I'm really influenced by Joe Waverly. Look, here's his book. Look, here's things that Joe Waverly is doing that are, that I've incorporated into my thinking. Right. I mean, look, look, look at how Joe Waverly is sort of thinking about things. I mean, that's really useful to me. And so what I want to do is I want to point a spotlight on people who really influence me because they can also be of use to you. And that's different than me kind of taking an idea and saying, this is mine, right? And I'm going to be your guru, right? I don't want to be anybody's guru. I want to be like a signpost pointing to lots of, of cool ideas. Because the, all this stuff like didn't like happen into my head. I'm 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 doing the same thing that I'm suggesting you do, just to absorb what is useful and um, and, and 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 look by. There's a, there's a ton of people out there that we can really learn a lot of useful stuff. But thank you so much for your your support, Sam. Well, I admire you for this kind of discussion because I've watch tutorials where people are obviously using Betty Edwards' book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, and they don't give any credit to her at all, but all the exercises are from her book. So um, thank you, Jack, for being so honest with us and for ruining my watercolors of birds. Well, um, I'm, 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 I'm honored to have, have done that uh with you um and um yeah and and just sort of think about uh, also let's, because we like to sort of talk about ideas in this group think about this not just in terms of i got this idea from joe Wever, uh waverly i want to think about this in terms of all sorts of information that is kind of coming into my brain i want to keep track of where i got my ideas from so that I can give props to those people where I can. Um, and, and also, like, that's, that's what scientists do, right? So scientists will take everybody else's idea and they cite the work. Like, like this person said in this article, mm -hmm. this year, in this publication, this thing, I'm building on these ideas, and that's sort of taking me over here. And then we're in this communication with other people about all of these these ideas, and um, that's different than sort of trying to pretend that all these ideas just sort of crawled out of my brain and went kind of. It's fun. Thank you so much. You're and welcome. It's great to see you again. Um, let's join Susan. Susan, you can now unmute and I'm bringing you into the spotlight here. Hi there. Hey, hey. I, I just thought it was, um, what, what, what Sandra brought up about, um, this sort of, yeah, I'm trying to find the words, this, this, this idea of, of like, you know, taking your, your method and following it 
and and the idea of of you know not exactly we shouldn't be following your method or anybody's method as, as gospel, but just taking those bits and what can we learn from that and and improve and sort of put that together, come up with our own methods for doing things. And I was just so it reminded me of something you've commented how your your methods for drawing birds and I presume everything else have changed over time, you know, because you are always, you know, you're faced with a new bird and you're trying to figure things out. And I think that's, that's an approach that we all ought to be taking, right? It's not so much like saying, this is the way to do it, but what's working, what's not working. Can I come up with something different and ha having some, some strategies that work for you is a great way to kind of speed up the process. So you're not trying to create that thing anew every time. Right. So, but just okay, so this was just a, a, a sort of a thing that thing that amused me, and I, I I think that you will take this as amusing as, as amusing and not insulting. So, okay. <laughs> which is that I so I happened to be looking at uh, your book on drawing birds, um, on Amazon at some point recently, and I happened to stumble across a a somewhat negative review that I felt was an interesting example of sort of missing the point. And was sort of educational in the way that it missed the point. So that's why I say. It. So I hope that you. Oh, want good. To no, this this is this is fine. Yeah, I I I I never read the reviews because. Um, if you don't want me to say that. I just won't. won't, won't. No, 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 no. I'm actually really curious now. This is going to be fun. So basically, the, the person complains that they had seen a recent video of yours where you explained that you had changed your way of drawing birds. So, so therefore, this entire book is useless because it is the wrong way to draw birds. And therefore, nobody should buy this book because it's wrong. Because you yourself have determined that you were doing it wrong. <laughs> Just like, yeah. no. Yeah. All of those tips are great tips. And, you know, the fact that you've come up with some new strategies that work is great. Maybe this person could combine those strategies with other things with other strategies they develop by trying to draw birds. That's right. Okay. And and most of the stuff the, the there are probably five pages in that that I would significantly change, mm -hmm. um, and that is the ones where I'm kind of saying you know I I, I first you, I used to I used to find the axis of the body of the bird draw that then put in the body then put in the head, and now I have people pet the bird and we draw the line along the back and hang the head uh, from that. And so those parts where I'm saying, like, here's my sort of initial step by step in drawing this bird, I would change those. But it doesn't change, you know, how you draw a wing, how you draw a beak, all those other sorts of things or strategies about field sketching. So that is, um, well, yeah, the uh, honest, my when I, I've, so I've been working on drawing birds, I haven't been drawing that many birds, but, you know, I've been, so I'm sure I will improve faster if I draw more of them. But, uh, you know, I, what I have been finding actually is, is for me, getting those shapes and proportions in place before I focus on the negative space has been more helpful for me. And I think maybe that's just because of a combination of how I'm looking at it, what the birds are doing and how quickly I can, I can get certain things down. And also the fact that because I'm not that used to drawing birds, I don't really have those proportions kind of in my head. Kind of like you said, you're, you're looking at so many gazelles that your horses are coming out gazelle-like. I've been not looking at, looking at birds as much. And so it, I, it's, I, I can't quite so quickly and innately get the proportions down. So for me, it has been more helpful to try and get those other shapes in first and then get in those. And maybe later when I have drawn a lot more birds, I'll find that going in a different order and doing those things differently will be more useful for me. Yeah. Maybe I'll come up with a totally different strategy that that is different than anything you're saying or anything else anyone else is saying. Um, you know, will work. So I think that's I think we we all should have that attitude of of I think of not taking any of these things as like this is the rule, this is how you must do it to be successful, but as these are some great tools. If you haven't tried it this way, try it. It will probably bring new benefits to your art and it can be a good strategy if you're not sure how to start and you know yeah <laughs> so. yeah um and and also and then we think of like so what is my method mm -hmm. if my method is changing so um actually i'm going to bring uh avea back in here on uh, in conversation because she found the bruce lee quote all right and so uh 
uh, uh, Vea, what is what does Bruce Lee say? He says, <clears throat> "Adapt what is useful, reject what is useless, and add what is specifically your own." And to give credit where I found that, I found that as one of the quotes on Jack's website. Um, <laughs> the um, yeah, whenever I find a uh, th this, the my my website came with something that allows you to put in testimonials. But instead, I use it to put in quotes from people that I think are are fun and interesting. Um, but yeah, and so if I if I have a technique, it's that, right? Which means that I reserve the right to change my mind <laughs> as better ideas come up. And also, the scientist in me, just when we apply that to ideas, the I'm going to accept an idea in proportion to the strength of the evidence for it. And I reserve the right to change my mind in the presence of evidence. And so we're do, we're doing the same thing. This is this this you know learning techniques about drawing My Little Pony <laughs> um, is uh, it's it's the same thing um, as as what we're trying to do with ideas in sort of Bayesian reasoning and and sort of changing our mind in response to, to, to evidence instead of having there like be a way. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna change my mind in the future and I'm gonna keep looking for people who inspire me and I'm gonna try to figure out what they do and I'm also gonna try to point a finger towards them. Oh, you got that too. Hey, <laughs> down with the Joe. <laughs> Um, the uh, I'm I'm gonna try to you know keep finding you know think those those things. It's, it's fun. It's really fun. Well, meanwhile, I don't have any any horses near to hand that I can draw from life. But next weekend, I will have the opportunity to draw lots and lots and lots of sheep, oh. and also a few alpacas and llamas and. It's going to be bad. And all kinds of fun, yeah. <laughs> Which would be fun because I can try and adapt the same strategies except that they're covered in wool so I can right. get away with a lot because they're just big and floofy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But, yeah. Um, but that'll be really fun. Yeah. And w where, where there's understanding the structure in there and sort of showing the volume instead of just saying it's all poofy, therefore I'm going to just draw poof. But there's structure to the poof. Oh yeah, yeah. The structure to that poof, mm -hmm. and the and way then, that it catches the light and everything is always really interesting. And different breeds of sheep have quite different uh, textures and and you know look of the wool as well. So we have a lot of fun. See if see how well I can uh, do that. I'm going to the sheep and wool festival. So there'll be lots of different breeds and there'll be lots of fun. Uh, Vea's got something for us. Uh, I see that Marcia had mentioned Tim Pond, so. Yeah, him too. This guy. <laughs> I want to just come and spend time in your library. You'd be welcome to, if you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But, I, but you might you might have to count the books at the end and make sure it wasn't leaving. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I wanted to add too that I really appreciate about what Jack was saying about changing your mind, and then also about the techniques he uses, is that. All, I found all of the techniques that you teach us to be useful, even the ones that you consider, like with the whole bird one, even if that is something that you consider outdated and not something you use now, I still find that useful because part of our growth is creativity, like creatively using different techniques that you learned in different places. So maybe the, the stick one isn't going to work so much for the bird anymore, but we might use that somewhere else in our nature journaling. Um, so, so all of these techniques, the fun of it is finding new places to try them out. Um, or like this might seem obvious, but to me, it just kind of hits me. Um, when we're blocking in the horses, now I'm thinking about, oh, that'd be really fun to go and try that again with the boulders that I see on the mountain. Or, or um, like when you're talking about sheep, Susan, that I'm thinking, oh, fun for cloud practice. Um, or I'm like, you know, because of course they look like a cloud. <laughs> But also fun for playing with the shadows because of how, like how do you emphasize shadows on white, even and, and maybe they're not totally white sheep either. Um, but how do you emphasize the shadows in that? How do you see the different colors in the shadows? Is it a warm shadow? Is it a cooler shadow? Maybe the sheep are blocky too. Bounce light. 
yeah. light as it comes through, the way the light kind of passes through the edges and really like lights them up. I've got photos of these sheep in previous festivals, so I'm going to scrutinize them. Yeah. That's going to be fun. That's yes. going to be really, really cool. cool. Awesome. Um, and so uh, we are sort of in the Bay Area here. Um, uh, I, I, I think um, we're going to do a few more of these classes, and I will be setting up a live field trip to Canham Ranch. So we'll get a chance to go out and draw horses at the horse rescue place together. Um, and if you folks out there have a chance to go find horses near you um, or go over to Kate's house, um, <laughs> you uh, 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 take take advantage of that. But it might be easiest to start with some photographs, but then don't just stay in photograph land. But when we're just kind of analyzing these shapes, that might be a useful thing. Actually, it might be really nice just to put your hands on the horses. Go get permission to go brush somebody's horses. Um, so, yes. Okay. Well, um, I know that a lot of people here have probably. <laughs> so if you if your you, if your parents took pictures of you on the horses, go pull out your old photo albums and practice drawing those horses that you had such good memories with. <laughs> um, we did a thing in Pencil Mouse and Chill to see who'd been riding horses, and almost everybody raised their hand. So I think a lot of us have had those experiences to to share with each other. Um, and I was going to say something else, but I can't remember. Um, and if I also, it comes back to you, let us know. And I also know that Kate's raising her hand, so I'm going to make yeah. sure. Let's, let's bring in uh, Kate. Now, um, Kate, as I was uh, preparing to do this, um, I really had you in mind because I thought, I've, I've got to make this good and useful because Kate's going to be there, and, and I don't want to mess up horses in front of Kate. Um, yeah, I'm so glad I was able to make it today. Things have been a little hectic, so I haven't been able to come to as many events as I would like lately. But one thing I was going to offer is either uh, I could go out right now and I could pull one out if you guys want to try doing a three quarters view from a live horse, or I could do that sometime during pencil miles. Oh, oh! Can we get a pony? Th this this is is really cool. I think not today because we're going to. Um, I don't want the the sh the the this to last an extra three hours yeah. but um let's shoot shoot me an email please and remind me of this idea and let's actually work that into one of our upcoming workshops once i do one on details then we're, let's have a uh my little pony day with kate all right sounds good well, that would be so much fun because i can turn them around for you guys and you guys get all angles uh i should figure out how to Set the camera up up there. I'm just gonna set it on the back of the car. And, and, um, and you could, you could, you yeah. could like put your hands on the horce and sort of, you know, give it a little massage and so like, you know, here I've got my hands on, like these are the iliac crests here, right? And yeah. These are the, you know, we could just sort of see, have as you pet the horse, mm -hmm. um, we could sort of see those 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 angles and those. That would be really fun. Yes, please. Yeah, let's do that. Um, you know, what also might be kind of fun to do is do something with, uh, like the gates of horses. So I think that'd be the most fun to watch. That, that would be fun. I have a previous workshop on, on yeah. gates. Um, we'll but, incorporate that. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this sounds like fun. So maybe start, we'll pet the horse and then yeah. we'll get that horse in motion. Sounds good. Mm. <laughs> oh that's great what's been happening in your journal these days oh um well things have been a little busy i've been juggling a lot of things but mostly what i'm doing is really trying to improve my watercolor work and really get a good handle on that medium and work on blazing and stuff like that uh, i'm trying to think of what i have since i last saw you guys so I think what I've got is, um, so I had an interesting little adventure with mushroom hunting. So I, while riding, I found a chicken of the woods mushroom. Mm -hmm. And important to note, I found it on a conifer tree, which, you know, um, I'm sure you're gonna get, going to get a laugh out of this later. Anyways, picked it up, dragged it home, uh, boiled it, and then cooked it and put it in stew. And the thing with when chicken in the woods grows on conifers, sometimes depending on the tree you can get certain like wood tannins and toxins that do not make you feel great. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> so I accidentally poisoned myself. 
and it was so delicious that I ate a bunch of it. Oh. Yeah. So oh, good wow. job, Kate. <laughs> yeah. Aside from that, I've just been so unfortunately this journal is like a three month journal instead of a one month journal like they usually are. And I've just been like going through trying to get a bunch of just good practice and in, iridescence to... here. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to figure out layering and then wet on wet and just really make my watercolor look more natural. So I'm doing that, just some studies and trying to really and this isn't watercolor paper, so So it does the wobbly. Yeah. Um, but I will show you what I'm doing with watercolor a bit. Um, been doing lots <gasps> of studies with the alligators. Oh my gosh, that is, this is so much fun. Yeah, and I'm doing some big paintings, which I'll show you in a moment. But this is the sketch for one of those. Uh, it's a northern pygmy owl attacking a pair of um, spotted toys. I'll get that painting out in a minute. And I've got some cactus wrens, some puffins. Uh, Buix Wrens, I started doing just like little outlines and working on getting, you know, backgrounds and figuring out my greens. Uh, mm -hmm. Some heron studies. Oh, boy. Oh, these pencil miles are yeah, just. Yeah, well, I mean, there's been so much practice because I moved and I've had all this chaotic stuff going on. And then there's a contest going on at a local art store where you uh, do these six by six little squares. And so I figure I'm going to do some bird illustrations. I finished one of them, which I'll show you when I get my portfolio. Control back there. Uh, yes, good eye. And I've got a little kill deer, which was the one I ended up going with. Um, just more little sketches. And before this class, actually, I ended up doing some just like loose sketches of horses I just wanted Pinterest and scrolled through and you know fun that's really that. really fun yeah well and then there's a green heron for a big painting I'm working whoa, on whoa, wait, wait, hold, hold, on. Let, hold that closer to the screen um, I'll show you the painting your, your, in progress your, um, line variation here is really striking and exciting oh thank you yeah, and there's oh, notes for this class. That's really fun. Well, actually, go, go back one. Go back to the green heron. And notice um, on where the detail is placed and uh, have, and higher contrast, how mm -hmm. your eye just gets sucked into the head there. If yeah. Kate had done this whole drawing with that same level of detail, it wouldn't have the same it impact. What that's getting turned into, because I transferred that over to watercolor paper, and I'm doing a really slow glazing process. Mm. Um, so I'm going to build that up a bunch and bring that contrast back, but that's what that's becoming. And then, right. um, let me just grab my portfolio really quick. So I've got a few little things for you. Um, let's see, let me figure out where I put that, uh, kill deer really quick. Oh, here it is. Okay. So for my first entry to that contest, I've got this little kill deer here. <laughs> so I can enter up to three. So I'm going to turn this in and grab another little square. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's see, where did I put it? Oh, oh. Just later. Uh, and then one thing I worked on was doing like, you know when you see uh, yes. you're yep. at a state park or something with all the different species. So I worked on trying to incorporate as many species as I could from the ecosystem. That's fun. I love those those whole ecosystem drawings. I remember being, yeah. seeing my first one of those in a National Geographic. And then when you get into to parks, uh, these, these ones where you kind of are above and below the water, so right. much fun. So much Yeah, fun. I think this one would work better if I had done it larger, but I just want to start really doing stuff that pushes what I'm capable of technically, like this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you had fun figuring out the plumage on that. I did. That was kind of the whole point of this. So one, I know that um, like botanical stuff really challenges me. And right now I've got some amazing golden raspberries that I grew out in my yard right now. So I picked a bunch of those, pulled them in for references and worked on, you know, making botanical stuff look good. And then I really wanted to work on being able to take a bunch of references and build a bird from scratch by 
putting together different ones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the owl is like a combination of like six different reference photos that I use for plumage and for position because I found one where the owl's wings were in the shape but the feet weren't down. So I found the feet off another owl. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this one's a really technical one. And, and, and but, but if you have studied the anatomy, then you're able to take those pieces and put them together yeah. without having them look like Frankenbird. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that's uh, the idea. It works. Yeah, it was really fun to do. It took me three days to finish this one. Pencil miles working for you right there. Yeah, well, I'm trying to create like polished work finally that I feel like, oh, this feels really finished instead of this is like, I don't know. Yep. But yeah. That's, 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 fun. <laughs> that's really fun. Yeah, I think that's all I've got. I did do a puffin, but I really didn't like what happened with, uh, I feel like the colors don't quite work. And I kind of just ended up doing it in one, like uh, the lights and darks aren't really there. I feel like if I done a light background and had a very striking black bird, it would work by just sort of let all fade into the same kind of mm. saturation. So your, your value range, you want a greater Yes, value. value. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, that's the point but of... The, the, the colors that are dancing in that foreground wave yeah. are really effective. That's, that's really feeling watery for me. That's moving water like that is so crazy challenging in that foreground wave. Um, that's, it's hard to do, but it's working. Yeah, it is. So I've been really just trying to pick painting topics that challenge me. And lately, I've just been buying like big sheets of the arches watercolor and chopping it into pieces that aren't like, you know, perfectly even that kind of gives me permission to like, okay, just paint. Mm, you know, right. it's not. Yeah. So pencil miles, you can't pencil really miles. get enough of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Um, please, yeah, thank you for having me. Email. We'll figure out a good date between the two of us to have okay. uh, live with your ponies. Uh, yeah, let's do that. That would be so much fun. And if you want to bust them out at any pencil mile, I bet uh, they would. That be might be good for a good trial run just to see uh, if we get the Wi Fi out there. So that's a good yeah. idea. I think we can, but we'll <laughs> right. figure out locations and everything. But yeah. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Oh, that's really, really fun to see. Um, the uh, Let's uh, head over to Latvia um, and uh, see our friend Walters. Um, are you back home? I'm going to add you into the spotlight here. And you can now unmute. It's good to see you again. Hi, good to see you. Um, so may I just say that Kate's watercolors are looking very, very good. She just showed me, showed the, showed the painting, and I was like, well, it, she, she said that it's not that good, and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> the colors on that and the lights and darks, they they seem to go together very well. So, um, Well, and, and also, the um, what we're seeing is just, you know, Kate, when she shows us stuff, like she's, she's done this, like she's going through a journal each month. Not, not that this is what everybody needs to do because sometimes we don't have the, the time or the, 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 the focus to do that, but you can really see how it's not a magic gift that Kate has been working really hard at this and putting in a bunch of miles. And the result is her her ability to control the watercolor, to understand the birds. All these different skills are are developing. That I mean, that's yeah. I agree with you. I, I was like, whoa, you've just popped up to a new level, right? So we tend to kind of plateau, and we have breakthroughs, plateaus, and breakthroughs. Kate's just had a huge breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So um, show you these. These Let me, are uh, minimize my screen so that oh so I've been trying a lot lately not to focus on like getting one bird done in detail in detail like uh, one pose but just getting down a bunch of poses and uh, this is the northern weather. I think it's called yeah. weather, something like that. Um, and uh, 
I tried uh, to I tried the uh, wet on wet uh watercolors for this one and this one is a bearded reedling down at the ornithological station I just came back uh like yesterday uh we were uh ringing some birds over there so oh so wait, wait, did you get to, to have this one in your hand oh uh, yes we so I was there for four days yeah I was there for four days so and we were bringing a lot of uh fascinaries but like warblers um like the kind of chickadees uh but you know the different uh kind we have here the t the and yeah yeah and uh at the last day I got the permission to open the nets by the lake and that's where these guys live so uh I while I was just about to go home we caught one and I got to sketch it as well so yeah there's all all the data is also here written so um so it was a beard reeling it was first year um its wing was 64 millimeters um so that's six centimeters and four millimeters um we also look at how many um i don't know actually how you call it well not that important but it weighed 17.4 grams this one and it's a male so all the data is also written here so always fun to do that that is really really cool i like how you're including the scientific data um and with the the the, the sketches and notes it's also cool to have the the finished watercolor there next to pencil sketches next to ones with light washes on them um yeah. like john busby you're you're becoming a collector of bird shapes here yeah i'm really trying to be um I'm gonna actually. I have a bunch of his originals. I'm obsessed with his paintings oh, right now. How how many uh, originals do you have? Four. I I was looking on uh, John Busby's website the other day. I really would love to get myself my first John Busby painting, and I think they're that's... beautiful. I'm gonna I'm a, show you what I have maybe for first. <laughs> do you recognize any of these birds? Oh, look at these guys. Yeah. So this is a chestnut sided. Yep. That's a kingbird. And that's a red start. So that's you, a you yellow got, bird. What, are, these birds aren't showing up over there, are they? So for a brief six days, I was in the States about two weeks ago. Really? Yep. On I the East Coast, went, though. Yeah, I went down to New York. Um, I was in New York. For like yeah, for six days, um, and three mornings, yeah, about for three morning mornings, I had the chance to go to Central Park, and um, and do some birding. So that's so much very fun. fun. Um, do you ever uh, do you ever make it over onto the West Coast? You have yeah, to I was let just saying. No, uh, you have I to let me know. My, I was there with my grandmother. And I, I said I like I said to her that you know I have a friend on the west coast and woman well, maybe we should like go but uh but uh, you know we were there for six days so and I really wanted to see New York so uh, yeah no that's a next really time, fun area we'll do it next time yeah that's but great. also got some well these aren't that good but uh, also got some you know, the lights awful also got some cardinals um those are fun birds so tanagers so it was quite a fun trip it was quite a fun trip and man i have to say your warblers are pretty easy oh yeah like, well, that's so true they actually have field marks you're yeah yeah you're, like your warblers was, you've got field mic marks like its third primary is two millimeters longer than its second primary you know yeah what? so so we were just laughing about it on uh at the uh station uh at the ornithological station that 
it's pretty easy because we we also got some birds that are that are called chiff chaffs and you can distinguish distinguish them from uh birds that are called wood warblers um if it's fur uh, if it's third primary feather is as long as its eighth primary feather and if it's the same length then it's a chiff chaff if it's longer then it's a wood warbler yeah good luck on everything that. else is the same yeah so. that's that's right that's that's crazy so you can like only distinguish them if you have them in hand if you see them if you photograph them you if you're a real expert you could but that's the easiest way to do it so yep yeah the um yeah i i was i was uh, i've got this hold on i'm gonna go grab my my book of uh birds of europe um uh, Ah. Um, um, I was heading over to get my birds of Europe and I, I got distracted. Um, the uh, I can't find it right now. I, I need to have a better organization system on, on my shelves. But um, I did... Um, I got two new books of John Busby shenanigans and these things are blowing my mind. There's a bunch of full, I love it when they, you, you get full size sketches of, um, of, of, of somebody's work. Cause then you can really sort of feel them drawing, but there's some really yeah. in, inspiring things in here. Um, and when you buy these, what you do is you go to um, uh, so from John Busby's website, it supports his daughter. So you're in contact with his daughter, yeah. Um, and um, that's uh, that's great. So uh, could could you show us your yes, your, your John Busby's? Oh. Two are here. This is one is of I will bring you closer, but um this is of Azure winged magpies. And this one is of uh sketches of beer uh bearded reedlings and some kind of a warbler that's all just brown. Uh, uh our, our European warbler, there, warbler that's just brown. Yes. Then this one is of a female or a juvenile. It's written here. So an immature female, an immature female, red-footed falcon. These uh, ones. Oh, nice having all these little shapes in there with that loose watercolor. Oh. Yeah, so... I like that on these ones, he, he's he got lines here, belly, and on the very last part of the feathers, and then the rest is defined just by color. Really? Yeah, so <laughs> there are practically no lines on this one. They're just oh. on the belly, the beak, I don't see almost none on the back. And here at the tips of the feathers yeah. to indicate where uh, the feathers stop, I, but the rest is defined by color. Yeah, I, I am. Um, I'm, I'm also in contact with folks over in Europe about uh, John Busby used to do that seabird drawing class. Ah, uh, yes, and the seabird. I'm trying to look yeah. at how to how do I get into that? Um, if I get some uh, good answers back, I will I will pass you that information. Maybe yeah. that's where we should meet up. <laughs> that would be fun and then this one i received recently haven't had a chance to uh to look at it very closely but this is april 91 in kapili so that's india it's, this one is india oh. so there's a bunch of different species here yes oh what fun 
Yeah, when you when you actually have a real watercolor or a real painting in your hand, it's really different than the uh, when we're looking it at is. it. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So uh, so need to explore those more, but uh, yeah, that's about that's about all. Haven't been drawing as much as I would like, but uh, still still something so at least that's that the, the, the you know there there are there are periods when we do less there are periods when we do more and if we have this sort of ideal that we always have to be like <sighs> and then we we really beat ourselves up when we kind of aren't doing that but this is just what what, what happens we just do the best that we can with what we have at the time uh, yeah Walters, thanks so much for sharing that it's great to see you again Thank you. Um, let's uh, jump over to London. Um, uh, Ray Bonto, it's great to see you again. Um, and you can now unmute. Hi. Hi there. Um, what have you been working on these days? Um, yeah. So. Oh. Um, oh, the Brachiosaurus. Where'd you see the Brachiosaurus? Um, Poseidon. Oh, that's fun. I like the little uh, figure of you down below the Brachiosaurus. Can you see? Oh, with the <laughs> the uh, sliding down and parachuting. That is so much fun. That is yeah. so much fun. Oh, and then you're getting oh. Oh gosh, these dinosaurs are really neat. And I also like your volumetric horses. That you're kind of really kind of getting a sense of 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 depth in these. Mm -hmm. Oh, well done. Well done. I thought you were trying to oh wait, where is it? Yeah, here. Um I thought the original picture was eating grass so yep. i drew it eating grass and then i realized you had drawn it <laughs> oh, I, I i had it i had it both ways um so i had a a kind of a hydra going on with with two heads oh. <laughs> and uh this is really fun well done on getting those planes on the rump of that horse there um and uh that uh in the way that the barrel of the chest Kind of arcs across there that's uh that really sort of i can feel the volume in that thanks now my challenge for you is to do a dinosaur three-quarter view and try to get the same kind of uh figure out what shapes you would put into a dinosaur oh speaking of which oh check you out Oh, this is so much fun. I like that the the far side limb and arm the far side limbs in shadow there. Um and with the the patterns on these we can get to, we get to do uh anything which we want. But this this feels like, you know, it could have been a critter. That's really neat. Um, oh yeah. Um this is the horse from the previous class. Oh, gosh, gosh, gosh. A nice lost and found edges there, good proportions. I, yeah, it really, that, uh, what, that very, the, the, the shadow kind of rolling across the chest there, that soft shadow, really effective. Thanks. Yeah. That's about it. Oh, I like how you're, um, this makes me want to do some, uh, I'm going to have some time on an airplane today. Maybe I'll bring my journal and try to draw some dinosaurs. Oh, where are you going? Um, I'm going to uh, Catalina Island. Um, That's nice. It's, a, it's an island off the coast of California. I'm going to be teaching a nature journaling class down there. And then we're going to have three days for the family to kind of play around in nature 
Um, it'll be for my daughters their first time uh, getting on a wetsuit. And we're going to go snorkeling in wetsuits. And that should be a ton of fun. Wow. And thank you so much for showing me what's in your, your journal there. Um, also, those uh, could you show us that, 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 that final horse again? I just I like I really like the way you're handling your watercolors, um, those 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 warm ochres, um, just uh, a beautiful play of color in there, the soft edges. That's really fun. Thank you so much for for sharing that. Thank you. It's it's really good to see you. Um, all right, let's. Um, also, um, uh, 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 join Sharon. Sharon, thank you for being with us. I'm going to bring you into the spotlight here, and then I'm also going to join you into the spotlight. And you can now unmute. Hi. Hey there. How are you doing today? I'm good. Um, I just returned from what I call our great bison tour of the Dakotas. And um, before we left, I did like a little practice. I hadn't used gouache before. So I did a little practice in advance. So um, I have this as, um, in, I found an image of the Badlands National Park. And so I did that one. And then because we expected to see bison this was like a first attempt at a bison with gouache. And then we were going to the um, Custer State Park um, bison roundup, which is done by cowboys. And so I tried a horse. So then oh. this was a prepared paper that someone else did. So I don't need to show you that. Someone else did that one. And knowing that we'd be going through tall grass prairies and seeing windmills. I um, did some pictures of those. This image of, I tried to get a cornfield. I don't call that one a success. <laughs> and then well, I tried you, get, some, you, you do get that sort of sense of perspective and, 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 and it's sort of receding into the distance. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And good. I'm going to give it colors. another whirl. <laughs> then I tried cowboys. Their heads are too small. <laughs> But <laughs> that's how it goes sometimes. That's right. Yeah. Um, then Humans we were so hard to do. Oh, fun. yeah, yeah. We packed our um, telescope to take with us. We really only had one night when we could view the stars, stars, but we did see um, Jupiter and um, Saturn, and I was able to see the moons of Jupiter and the rings on Saturn through my husband's telescope, oh. and then. These were kind of like in preparation. Yeah, let's see if I can get it any better. Uh, I was just trying to do some skies and then try to get some of the colors of the grasslands represented here. And you got a murmuration? I did. I saw three murmurations as we were driving <gasps> west. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, by the way, well done on that murmuration. Those are so hard to represent. I really like the way you're showing it with different values. And then, then some dots in there, but but showing the the, the concentrations with the yeah, watercolor. Yeah. That's a great way to handle it. So that was um, yeah, three in one day. <laughs> oh, they were, so yeah, much fun. Then when we got to Badlands National Park, if you can believe this, when we arrived at the park close to sunset one evening. There was a giant bull right in front of the National Park sign. Oh, that is right. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the park. <laughs> and then we went to the Pinnacles Overlook and we watched the sunset with a whole bunch of other people. So I represented that. Mm. Mm. Let's see. So yeah, um, Jupiter has been putting on such a wonderful display these days. <laughs> So then at um, the Custer State Park, they built a new um, bison education center. And so um, it's set against a hill and then trees up on the hill. 
as we were driving through the park, we saw what they call the begging burrows. They come right up to the car. There's People aren't supposed to feed them, of course, but they do. And they just surrounded us. And so I, I just <laughs> got that real quick impression uh, of a, a, a burrow. And then also uh, we saw um, quite a lot of um, the bison right along the roadside. And again, I just really quickly sketched them in pen. And then later on, I added the color. So um, oh, that's I, fun. Yeah, I don't think the proportions are the greatest, but I got something down and that's what counted. Yes. Oh, this is so much fun. The Bison and, Education Center, is that, um, that's where they're teaching all the bison, right? Yeah, that's right. You know, they do, they do their math lessons and then yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. That's right. Because bison have to multiply. <laughs> and they do. And so they do. at Custer, yeah, at Custer State Park, they have a population of about um, 1,500 bison, which is too much of a carrying, um, too many bison for the park to carry. Mm -hmm. So they round them all up the last Friday of September. And it's such a big event that, pe that about 20,000 people come to watch it. And so this represents... We, my husband and I were on the north side of the valley, and we were looking towards the south side. So this just represents some of the observers and their mm. cars being parked up on the hillside on yes. the opposite side. And then the, um, the bison were driven through the valley right in front of us. And um, it was, it, you would think it would be really noisy because there are so many of them, but they were so distant from us. It really didn't make a lot of noise, but I didn't represent it. You know, the, my sketches are unfinished. I wanted to represent the dust being risen, you know, being raised. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I, I didn't quite get that. But these were the people, you know, people arrived at six o'clock in the morning for the 9.30 roundup. So people are in chairs waiting. Oh. There were photographers there ready to capture the moment. So it was, I just wanted to document all of that. And then of course we talked to an older cowboy that was part of the roundup. So got that one oh, that's down. That's really fun. That's and, really fun. And um, from, South Dakota, we went up to Theodore Roosevelt National Park in North Dakota. And along the way, we passed a lot of grasslands where they were um, harvesting the hay and we saw lots of hay bales. We visited the prairie dog towns. Mm -hmm. And of course, we just saw vast grasslands with cattle grazing. But one site I don't think I'll ever forget is on one of our hikes, we saw the little Missouri River from an overlook, and we were, you know, high up on a butte. You, you see that I'm ready to write something in yes. here about what we yeah. saw. But this was the weather that day. We started out sunny, then it got cloud, got partly sunny, partly cloudy. Then it got cloudy. Then it rained. <laughs> well, that's such a good idea. I love that little bar along the side showing the change in the weather i've never done that may i use that idea too oh yeah absolutely you're welcome to it but Thank it was just it was beautiful seeing the the buttes in the distance there is this big rock art outcropping in the foreground and the fence to protect people from getting too close to the drop off and the grasses so i just tried to represent that and I haven't drawn it yet. We, we had a really fascinating experience. We actually went to the edge of the river and there was a small herd of bison drinking there, um, maybe a football field's length away from us. So we saw so many bison. It was just like incredible. That's we had so amazing. much fun. And then on the way back, we drove through Minnesota and we're seeing all the colors form on, you know, the trees are changing color and, and then. Oh, oh is that, 
uh, the little dra the drawing on the top with the line with the colors on it, are you showing as you're going along the road general changes in color in the trees? Well, just kind of trying to represent the the colors of the grasslands, you know, just yes. like oh, yeah. what a good idea. Yeah, and then um, we had one of those uh, days when the light was coming through the clouds in shards, and it was just like yes. being scattered. Then we crossed Lake Michigan on a car ferry called the Badger. <laughs> so <laughs> through the Badger. <laughs> so yeah, it was a great trip. I have all kinds trip. of yeah, I have all kinds of notes um, in a, a little book that I was able to keep in the car. You know, because I I just can't. My husband, you know, some people can draw in the car. I just can't. And so I was just trying to keep notes about what I saw and the colors that were there so that it would, in addition to the photographs that I took, that I would have more um, reference, you know, more reference yeah. material, you yeah. know, gather impressions. But all all yeah. those things together just to help that memory be just so much richer. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, so... I just want to tell everyone, if you ever get a chance to go to the Dakotas, you must do it. <laughs> it is so beautiful. The Black Hills area, just gorgeous. And then uh, I had no idea. My husband suggested we go to Theodore Roosevelt National Park. I had no idea how beautiful it is. Um, and it just really makes me appreciate what he did for our country in really you know um getting accelerating the um designation of public lands you know just you, you, you know, can never do that now no no yeah oh, yeah it's it, it, much what harder a, yeah much harder yeah. to get a designation but um the dakotas who knew yeah, <laughs> they're fabulous uh, what a delight thank <laughs> you so much for sharing that adventure and your your observations Love the the you know collections of of human things, animal interactions, memories, weather, all those little bits and pieces. Just what a wonderful tapestry of the experience. Yeah, my journals aren't just completely devoted to nature. No, they're just oh, somebody's trying to call me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, humans are nature too. <laughs> so um, thank you. The, uh, uh, what I was about to say is that. My journal, I study Italian in it. I, you know, do some like spiritual meditation. You know, it's just like, it, it's just all over the map. It's my general purpose journal. <laughs> I think that's a really good way to have it. Some people like to have different books for different things. I'm also with you. I like to have it all in one place. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'll kind of keep a little notebook of, of, of things for when I'm kind of in Zoom meetings and things like that. But I'm, I'm generally the, the, the same approach. I like to have it all in one book. Mm -hmm. thank you so much for being with us yeah when i um when i kind of finalize these drawings i really intend to make like an accordion book representing the entire trip using this source material the photographs that right. we took my notes and just kind of put it all together then i'll share it that we would know, that love trip. to see that okay thank you <laughs> all right so bye <laughs> Bye -bye. And, and, and again, really appreciate looking into those journals. Um, I'm going to have to bounce in just a second because my daughters are getting out of school early today and I need to pick them up. Um, Vea, is it all right with you if I um, make you our, uh, the host of the meeting? Okay. Um, I saw there are two other folks who wanted to share something. Um, and you are now...